Listen up, partners. This is Good, Bad, Ugly on World Improv Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alex. My name is Asa. I'm David. And we've got more to come than just us three. Matter of fact, we've got eight of us in the studio today to be your astute wind counselors to get you through the week with any, yeah, that's right. Any problems you got, we're going to knock them out right here. We got it for you. Lots of advice. That's it. A ton of it. Matter of fact, we'll get to our first winner, and that's Butch from West Virginia. And he writes, Dear Wynn, I like bicycles as much as the next guy, but riders these days seem to be complete maniacs when driving through cities, like to own the damn road or something. Your thoughts and opinions. Like they own the damn road or something. What do you think about that, Ace? Uh, I ride my bicycle quite a bit, and I know that I have made drivers upset. And <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, you know, uh, like, like, it's a long story. Okay. It sounds like you did some nefarious activity or something. No, it's not nefarious. It's just... People who drive cars already feel entitled to the road, and the whole I- idea is to share the road. Uh-huh. It's not that bicyclists own the road. It's it's that we equally own the road. Oh. And I personally make it a point to go as fast or as close to as fast as the traffic is going. Okay. So if something happens, you go down just as fast as a car. Worse. <laughs> Perfect. That's yeah. That's the other thing is that you're in a, an armored like killing machine. Bicyclists are basically on the equivalent of like those pony sticks, uh-huh. like the broom handle with the pony head on it. Right. Like we're on the automobile equivalent of that. <laughs> so yeah, you, you're, you're not going to win too many battles. There but, is no protection. However, what you lo- what you lack in armor, you make up in agility. Too, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's faster than walking. That's it. David, what do you think, buddy? Think bikes, bike riders on the road? Do you think they're crazy? What's going on? Well, we all own the roads. Thank you, yeah. if we're taxpayers. Technically, you're right. Then we do own roads. So, you know, like, hands across America, mm-hmm. bike person, mm-hmm. car person, we're all in this together. I mean, if a meteor hit a road, everyone would be taken out. Yeah, that's a good point. And if you have a titanium bicycle, that can do some serious damage to an aluminum car. True. If, if the titanium bicycle breaks up into pieces because the meteor strike, the shards, the shrapnel, could actually go right through a car easily. The shrapnel could kill a driver. Yeah. Especially if they're uh, riding a open. convertible. Yeah. That, that's a good point. Yeah, I never think about that when I'm driving in my convertible. That's exactly right. I mean, if a titanium shard came and hit me, it probably take me out. No longer just a wooden pony stick. Hey, I yeah, mean, I hardly ever consider the possibility of a meteor hitting the road either. You know? that's something you've got to take in consideration, Asa. I mean, it, it could I've been very happen. irresponsible. It could happen. Yeah, Dave, and that's, that's why we need to fight together. To all of us, just be at peace with owning the roads because we do. That's very nice. Amen. That's ve- you know what? There you go, Butch. That is about the best advice we can give you. Is we all own the road, all of us. All right, let's move on to our next winner. It's Justin. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he writes, Dear Wynn, who is a good role model or idol for kids in this generation? Well, right away, this jumps to me. I mean, it's without a doubt. Cersei Lannister from the Game of Thrones, and here's why. Her unyielding and committed love, meaning a mother's committed love for their children, is not only extremely nurturing, but she proves it can accomplish amazing things. Cersei Lannister is a role model. Um, I, I have nothing to say on this matter because I do not watch Game of Thrones. So You should just for that reason. And she doesn't have any role models either. So I'm Chris, by the way. I'm, Hi, Chris. I'm Jillian, and I have a lot of role models. What do you think, Jillian? Who, who, who is it for the kids today? The kids? Mm-hmm. Um, I, God, I have to go with the Taylor Swift. That makes you know? total sense. She's, she's not crazy. She's doing her, doing her thing. And um, she's promiscuous, which is good, right? No. Oh, no. no. Take that back, Alex. Um, no, she's just, she's, I like Taylor Swift. Just being, just being her, but she's not like gross. Right. You know what's cool about her? She kind of controls her own destiny. She writes her music, she does exactly. her music. You know, uh, she, from what I understand, at least from, from what I've seen, she does a good job of portraying that, that she, she'll sit there for hours sign autographs with all the girls that come to the show and stuff like that. So, yeah, she's really uh, nice to her fans. Chris, what are, what are your thoughts on Taylor Swift? 
Uh, I don't know. I date her. Uh, nice. <laughs> that, that makes her a role model, right, Chris? Because yeah. obviously you would not yeah. date anybody that's not a role model. I'm well, not... that's definitely not true of my past. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think a role model because she seems like a little fake. Like she's trying to be what everybody wants her to be. And you need a role model who's going to be who they are no matter what. So Dennis Rodman or something. Uh, Donald Trump. Okay. Oh. Look at him, man. He doesn't care. He's, this point. guy is just senile and he wants to put it on the biggest stage possible. Because that's who he is. That is true. I mean, he does not care. Yeah. He does put his, you know, his opinions and thoughts out there. And I guess from the standpoint of, you know, make yourself known mm -hmm. and don't hide anything and try to avoid being PC. I mean, he's definitely got that in space. His I'm, name's a brand. I'm, it is. And he's got a brand. <laughs> Hashtag branding. Um, I'm still on the on the Taylor Swift? side. No. I just think that Ashley Kutcher is going to pop out at some time and say that we've all been punked. And that Donald Trump is not really running for president. That's, you know what? Someone That's... actually mentioned that about a couple months ago. Oh, really? Yeah, not about Ashton Kutcher, but about saying that I, I'm, I, that he's just doing it for fun. And then if he were to win, he just said, ah, psych, I really didn't want it anyway. I just wanted to see if I could get it. Right. And that was it. I mean, like, I would just like to say that I'm just as qualified for the job of president of the United States as he is. Well, you know. I think we all are. And and, and Alice Cooper the thinks so. He's a model. He, yeah. <laughs> without him, you would have never said those words. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. That's right. <laughs> you got me, Chris. And he's a role model because Alice Cooper <laughs> threw his hat into the mix. He wants yeah. to be president, too. I heard that. Bill so, Murray. Yep. He's inspiring yes. people. So that is a role model. He's inspiring people. Sure. Well, <laughs> sure, sure. All right. Well, let's move on to our next winner, and that's Chrissy from Brooklyn, New York. And uh, Chrissy writes, Dear Wynn, what do you think of the open public display of a fully nude life-size statues of Donald Trump popping up cities across the U.S.? Well, it's funny because Jill just was talking about that, and so were, you, were, were, were we a little bit. But, yeah, what do you guys think about that? I mean, Jimbo, so you know that they made a life-size statue of Donald Trump. And I, I, no, I, I didn't know It's completely naked. He looks kind of like Cartman naked, you know, from South Park. Okay. Uh, that's what How they, do they know what Trump looks like That's naked? a good point. I don't know. Okay, if they're not actually correct to proportion i think that's slander you know you're right technically that would be so but yeah they're popping up they're, they're making these statues and they're putting them across the united states and you know it's the first time that's ever happened in history that you know there's a naked presidential candidate out in public squares and stuff and oh yeah there oh. you go that's what it looks like right oh. there unbelievable oh yeah well, all... wait did they oh yep yeah. nope nope there yep. there's all of them there it's all of it there they... well they gave him a lot of a lot of hair well, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, who knows where, where they got the inspiration here, but nonetheless, those are popping up across the United States. So Chrissy wants to know, what do, you, what do we think about that? You know, given the circumstances, given the fact that it's a presidential nominee, I mean, we haven't seen any naked Hillary's, you know, looking like a Barbie doll or anything popping up across yeah, the country. Uh, yeah, thank God. <laughs> hey. So obviously you got an opinion here, Dave, what do you think? I think the statues are a good idea. I mean, you, you think about the uh, Mile High Horse we have in front of the uh, airport with the mean eyes, the devil eyes. Yeah, maybe the satanic give, one. Yeah, maybe give uh, give the Trumpster a little uh, some mean eyes. You know, doing the cobra. Right. Doing the cobra. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. I never thought of it that way. So we just say they should just alternate. You know, the way he looks, his actual posture should be a little different, more aggressive, more demonic. A little more demonic. You know, I think you show some confidence. Show some confidence in himself. Okay. I I, I really. I think it goes against the the spirit of this election that they're only putting up Trumps. That's a good point. I mean, the whole the whole one. It's our first female presidential nominee from a major party. Right. Equality, everybody. Yeah. Like I get it. Let's get them both out there. Yeah, I understand. It makes sense. This should be right. It should be equal, right? Uh -huh. If it's a naked guy, it should be a naked female. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Objectify them both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there, <laughs> there you go, Chrissy. I think that's kind of what we got on that one. Uh, Dick from Austin, Texas writes, Dear Wynn, things in our society and around the world seem to have gotten so crazy that it almost feels like you have to do drugs or find religion just to make things feel sane. Am I crazy for thinking this, or what are your thoughts? Wow. Did you get that, Ace? Yeah. Are those the only alternatives <laughs> the whole to be on drugs or to find religion? <laughs> are those like... <laughs> that's kind of what Dick is thinking, yeah. That's, is he yeah. crazy, Ben? If that's what he's thinking, you think he's nuts? That that that, that those are his only alternatives. Dick well, is nuts. D Dick yeah. is nuts. Yeah. There are there's a third option uh, by Eckhard Tolle, a writer, and it's called In the Now. Right. That's the third option. Okay. <laughs> to, to write books or read his books. 
No, just to live in the now okay. and ignore everything else. Good point. I like that, Tom. That's a very good point. Not to worry about what everyone else is thinking and all the craziness around you. Just to live right now, here and now, like we're talking on the air. That's right. Yep. Meteorite or Trump naked statue in front of me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't I'm matter. in the now. Okay. I got it. Ace. I'm still hung up on this equivocation of drugs and religion. <laughs> Those do not seem... I used to live next to some Russian Orthodox folks. Okay. And uh, they didn't like Harry Potter. They were against that. Um, All right. And I I, I just bring this up because it's hard to talk about. Because uh, I just don't... Why? I don't get it. I want to talk to Dick right now. Maybe that's me not being now. But right now, that's what I want. That's me being now. I want to talk to Dick. Well, what what is Dick's religion? I don't know. He hasn't. He didn't say. But you know what? We're gonna leave it up for open discussion. Maybe Dick will hit us up again, and that's the show. <laughs> Love, fortune, status. Let us do your astrological chart. Horoscope corner on World Improv Network. Oh, hey there, Leos. You're gonna lose your Lee jeans unless you go and. Uh, Check out the World Improv Network on YouTube. Like us over there. We have a channel. Check us out on Facebook, the World Improv Network. Like us on Twitter, at World Improv Net. You can send us suggestions every week. We'll use them on the show. Uh, you can also check us out. We have a podcast, iTunes, Google Play. Download, subscribe, leave some reviews. And as always, you can catch us live on the terrestrial radio, KDCO 104.7, and Mile High Sports Radio, AM 1340, every Sunday night. Thanks for listening to Win on Mile High Sports Radio. Don't forget to be a winner and interact with the cast by sending your suggestions or questions for each show segment throughout the week by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, on Twitter at World Improv Net, or by calling into the Mile High Sports Radio studio line on Sundays before or during the show. See you next week.